Unit 9 on reactions. So we're finally going to get into some of the stuff that I know you, some of y'all in my class at least have been begging me for. So here we go. All right, first we're going to talk about balancing reactions in concept one. And a couple of reminders from our matter unit that are essential to understand before we move forward. So I'm going to bring them back up. I want you to remember physical and chemical changes and the difference between them. So remember, a physical change is a change in a substance that's only affecting its physical properties. For example, if I take a piece of paper and I cut it, or if I color it, or I crush it into a ball, or if I take an ice cube and I melt it, or I boil it, I'm not changing the identity of the substance. I'm just changing some physical things about it. Whereas a chemical change is a change in a substance that affects its chemical properties. So a chemical reaction is actually occurring and a new substance is formed. That's something like burning or rusting or decomposing. So these are things we've already learned, but now we're going to zoom in on that, those red words, on chemical reaction to really understand what that means. So a chemical reaction is a process by which the atoms of one or more substances are rearranged to form different substances. We represent chemical reactions with equations. So this is an example of one, and I'm going to break down what everything means on this over the next few slides. So I want you to label the one in your notes so that you understand as well. All right, so first, we have everything to the left of my arrow. Those are my reactants. They are my starting substances or my ingredients. Everything to the right of the arrow is a product. It is an ending substance. It's what's being made. When you're reading this as a sentence, that arrow that I put in blue, that is yields or produces. All right, so yields or produces. So the reactants yield or produce products. That's what we're looking at here. Next, you may have noticed that there's some larger numbers in front of the elements or the compounds, which are different from my little subscripts. That is a coefficient. It tells me the number of each substance needed. These can change, subscripts cannot. So I can put a coefficient in front of Cl2, but I cannot change the two. So if I only need one of a substance, a one is not written. So for example, the Cl2. Um, I only need one of those, but I don't write in the one. Just like when we write a compound like NaCl, I don't write Na1Cl1. Um, it's just not included. Now, so what this is saying is like two sodium atoms are needed for this reaction, but only one chlorine gas molecule. But it's really not even that way. It's more of like a ratio. So this is a two to one ratio. I need twice as much sodium as I need chlorine to make this happen. And then that blue symbol, that plus sign, that's just separating one or more reactants or products. So it's sodium plus chlorine yields um, sodium chloride. Now, last thing, there's this other notation. This is used to represent the state of matter of each substance. Like, for me to do this reaction, do I need the sodium as a solid, as a liquid, as a gas? What do I need it as? That's why these are included. So the S stands for solid, an L would be liquid, G is gas, and then a new one is aqueous. This technically isn't a state of matter, but it's just taking the substance and dissolving it in water. So if it was, so for instance, if this was NaClAq, so aqueous, it would, I would be making sodium chloride dissolved in water or salt water. All right, so let's put it all together. I'm going to write out in words what this says, so that if you were reading this, this is what you'd be saying in your head. So when you look at this red, this 2NaS, that is two solid sodium atoms. This blue arrow means reacts with or reacted with orange, one chlorine gas molecule yields or to make two solid sodium chloride salts. Now, all of that background to say, now we need to talk about balancing equations. Equations have to be balanced to keep them from violating the law of conservation of matter, which hopefully you remember from our matter unit in our popcorn lab, that matter can never be created or destroyed. It's only a change in form. So the mass of the reactants has to equal the mass of the products. If I start with 50 grams of reactant, I have to make 50 grams of product. 
If I start with two sodium atoms in my reactants, there has to be two sodium atoms in my products. They can't just like disappear and go nowhere. All right, so this is why these coefficients are used to balance reactions. They go in front of the formulas. And remember, these can be changed. These subscripts cannot be changed. That's really important. All right, so I have a couple steps to make this process a little bit easier for you so you can always balance equations really easily. So here are my steps, and then we'll do it again, a couple examples. First, write out the equation for the reaction. This may already be done for you. And so in the beginning, I'm going to write these out for you so that it's not as much work for you, but we will build um, for you writing them yourself. Then, put the symbols of each element in a column under the reactants and products, and keep your polyatomic ions together if possible. Count the number of each atom on both sides of the equation and write it in your chart. Now, we're going to change the coefficients only on either side of the equation to balance the number of each atom. We'll reduce coefficients as needed when we get to the end, because this needs to be in the lowest whole number ratio. All right, so here's what I mean. Example number one. Here's your equation. So step one, it's already given to you. Step two, we're going to put the symbols of each element in a column. So this is my little chart. I'm going to have reactants, and then the middle, and then the products. The elements go in the middle. So what elements are in this equation? Well, there's iron and chlorine. Step three, I'm going to count how many I have and write it in my chart. So on my reactant side, how many irons are there? Well, that's just one. On my product side, there's only one. So the irons are currently balanced. Chlorine, how many on the reactant side? Again, to the left of the arrow. Well, there's two. Product side, there are three. Now we move on to step four. We change the coefficients only on either side to balance the number. So I want the total number of, number of chlorines to be balanced. So what is the least common multiple between two and three? Well, it's six. So what do I need to put right here to make the total number of chlorines six? Well, I need to multiply it by three. When I do that, I now have a total of six chlorines. What do I need to do over here to do the same thing? Well, I multiply by two. 2 times 3 gives me 6. Now, when I did that, though, that also distributes, just like in math. So now I have two irons in my product side. So now my, my chlorines are balanced, my iron is not. So I need to multiply this iron by 2, and now it is balanced. Y'all, this chart is just for keeping track of your totals. Nothing you put down here really matters in terms of your final answer. It's all about what you do up here. Step five, you would reduce, but two, three, and two are the lowest and the most reduced they could be, so you can't simplify anymore, so you're ready to move on. All right, now we're going to do a harder example. This is going to combine what we learned in our last unit with this one. So this may overwhelm some of you, especially if you struggled with last unit, and that's why it's really important we keep up with everything we learn. All right, so aqueous sodium hydroxide and aqueous calcium bromide react to produce solid calcium hydroxide and aqueous sodium bromide. So first, we're going to have to write out the equation. Sodium hydroxide, that's Na positive 1, OH minus 1. Crisscross applesauce, that gives me NaOH. It's aqueous, as it says here. And, that's a plus, plus sign. Aqueous, whoop, calcium bromide, Ca positive 2, bro means minus 1, crisscross applesauce, that's CaBr2. React to produce, that's my arrow, solid. Calcium hydroxide, that's calcium positive 2, hydroxide OH minus 1, crisscross applesauce, CaOH2, and then aqueous and aqueous sodium bromide. So Na plus 1, Br minus 1 gives you NaBr. Step 2, we make our chart, and we write all that we have in here. So we've got sodium. We have oxygen and hydrogen, or also known as hydroxide. And because it stays together as hydroxide on the other side, it'll save you time if you just write it as a polyatomic ion in your chart. Then we have calcium and bromine. All right, we start with one sodium. We end with one sodium, so those are balanced. We start with one hydroxide. We end with two. We start with one calcium. We end with one. We start with two bromines. We end with one. All right, to balance this, don't touch the sodiums or the um, calciums. Let's figure out our sodium or excuse me, our hydroxides. If I multiply this by two, that gives me now two sodiums and two hydroxides. So my hydroxides are balanced, but my sodium isn't. So I need to fix it over here. 
If I multiply it by 2, that gives me 2 sodiums and 2 bromines. Notice that everything is now balanced. And I ended with 2, 1, 1, 2, which cannot reduce or simplify anymore. So you don't need to do step 5. Last thing I want to remind you of is something we learned about in our matter unit, and that is um, the signs that a chemical change and thus a chemical reaction have occurred. Remember, they are a release of light, temperature change, odor change, sudden color change, a gas being given off, and the sudden appearance of a solid, which is called a precipitate. All right, so now we're going to spend a, little, a good bit of time practicing balancing equations, and then we'll move on to classifying.